Well, joining us as our guest now, the law professor you just heard in that report, Ruth Halperin Kadari, who previously worked for the UN Committee on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. She joins us on the line from uh, Jerusalem. Hello to you, and thank you for uh, speaking to us here at France 24. Um, almost two full months. Why did it take so long? It took way too long for uh, Secretary General uh, Guterres to actually name Hamas as the uh, perpetrator of uh, sexual violence against uh, women in, in Israel on October 7th. And in fact, UN women uh, had not yet uh, acknowledged that uh, these reports of sexual violence uh, uh, are, are, are directed at what Hamas did and that sexual violence was actually part of the atrocities, of the terrible atrocities performed by Hamas on October 7th. I, um, can you, I think can that, you elaborate on that point about uh, some of the uh, women's groups maybe not recognizing those atrocities? It, it, until now, UN women did not name Hamas and did not say clearly that sexual violence was part of the atrocities performed by Hamas on October 7th and other um, international uh, women's organizations or um, human rights uh, bodies uh, likewise did not recognize the fact that women and rape, uh, women were, rep were, were weaponized and rape was used as a weapon of war uh, during the October 7th uh, attack of uh, Hamas in Israel. Why do you think the silence? I think that there are several reasons for that. I think that for many of these organizations, it was hard to break from the conventional framework of seeing Israel as the aggressor and Palestinians as the ultimate uh, victim. And it really needed them to change their mindset and to recognize that the picture is more complex and that Hamas, who purports to represent Palestinians, this time was not just the perpetrator, but committing atrocities that amount to crimes against humanity and possibly also to, to genocide. And I accept that um, the sufferings of civilians in, in Gaza is is really uh, very um, uh, heartbreaking, and I empathize with with them. But there is no symmetry in between the two sides of the conflict here, and the symmetry is what these bodies immediately uh, jumped to uh, after following October seven. Israel engaged in its um, counter. Uh, defensive attack on on uh, on Gaza. And here we are now, two months on. How is the investigation going? The investigation is still in the very early stages, and it's really important to bear in mind that most of the victims of rape, of sexual assault, were immediately killed. So of those who survived, there's reason to suspect that some were taken hostages and the very few who remained are not going to speak, at least not for the time being. Even for quote unquote regular rape cases, victims of rape are very, very slow to step forward if ever. And all the more so when these victims had also faced life-threatening situation. So without, without surviving victims, it's more difficult to establish the case. However, we already do have eyewitness testimonies of survivor, at least one survivor who described in gruesome details the gang rape with extreme, extreme level of brutality that she witnessed a few yards away from where she hid in the bushes. I personally heard from a paramedic who um, was a civilian that day who immediately joined the civil forces that uh, engaged in rescuing and treated a first patient who came to his ambulance with her clothes underwear torn, 
who lost, heavily lost blood and told him that she was raped by four men. So we have a number of such firsthand witnesses and then all the other evidence of the first responders who collected the bodies, who um, uh, we have footage. We can, have I, can I ask you about that? The evidence from the first responders, what sort of evidence is that? I presume you're, you're talking about forensic evidence. So there is no forensic evidence because of those bodies who were collected during the first days. The description of the people who worked at the morgue, who are still there, actually, by the way, because bodies are still being collected or remnants of bodies are still being collected. The description sounds like really being in hell with hundreds and hundreds of bodies piling up. And the very immediate goal was the actual identification of the victims and bringing to burial. However, we do have the photographs of the bodies that were that were found in the field of the bodies that were brought to the morgue and they all exhibit the same signs of women's bodies without their um, uh, clothes from the waist to the bottom uh, bleeding from the vagina from the private parts very often also being shot um, there or shot excuse me for the gruesome description, but shot in the breasts or in the face, the same degree of mutilation. So there is a pattern that is being repeated and that was found in various locations. And when this is added to other descriptions of women's bodies being found handcuffed to beds in several locations, mm -hmm. again, naked, again exhibiting signs of sexual assault prior to their murder. So when this is added to those accounts, the first first-hand accounts, and when this is added to the statements that are being uh, uh, given by Hamas terrorists in interrogations by mm -hmm. the security services, talking about the orders that they were given to enter and to capture and to torture and to rape, I think the picture is very, very clear. You're right. Certainly traumatic on many levels, a difficult, delicate process moving forward. Ruth, thank you so much for, for your time and for speaking to us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.